very good afternoon everyone so i am dr k kandasamy head department of chemistry so today here we discuss about the nmr nuclear magnetic resonance and mos spectroscopy the nuclear magnetic resonance is based on the nucleus which have spin of are magnetically active and the nuclear spin may be related to the nucleon composition of a nucleus in the following manner so especially here nucleus be working as a main area the based on the nucleus that means atomic number so we have some quantum numbers so many quantum numbers like spin quantum number principal quantum number azimuthal quantum number so here we are focusing the spin nuclear spin quantum numbers so that is i equal to n by 2 so as the based on the atomic number and mass so we can calculate the i that is the spin quantum number the atomic mass and mass number will be vary the boys in on the even even so it will give us a zero that means c c12 o16 si silicon 28 in 56 these are the inactive in our nmr okay so then whether the atomic number odd or mass number even so it comes h2 boron 10 n14 vanadium 15 so these are the active in our nm nmr is a allowed transitions also and also both the z and a are the odd number so that's also active in our nmos so we can calculate the sum proton in our h1 c13 we can calculate f19 we can calculate so through these techniques here the number of possible spin state will vary based on the 2i plus 1 as we see m equal to plus 1 to minus 1 okay the without the magnetic field the spin states are degenerate so some of the state will be we have as a fraction also we can possible to get the some nmr signals okay so this is a uh, nmr techniques the nucleus will um, we can absorb the action energy it will spin up direction as well as the down directions okay so this is a very we call the up direction is called alpha or lower energy the theta is a higher energy and this is used for um, our standard there is a tms tetramethylsilane so the compound having 12 equivalent protons magnetically as well as the electrically is a stable one so these are the um, especially we are analyze through the nmr it gives only one signal that is singlet so this peak tms uh, peak we take as a zero it is a zero ppm okay so this is a pascal law we can uh, uh, calculate the how many nmr signals or how many nmr splittings we are getting through this pascal law suppose the example ch2 ch3 proton is there so here we can follow n plus 1 rule so that means ch2 that is n plus 1 that is a ch3 that is a uh, uh, 3 plus 1 that is equal to 4 and ch2 that is a 2 plus 1 that is a 3 okay there are 4 and there are 3 signals ratio we are getting so that ratio is m equal to 4 means that means magnetic quantum number r is 4 means 1 is to 3 is to 3 is 1 and another thing Uh, m is equal to 3 means 1 is to 2 is to 1 okay so these are the signals a singlet doublet and triplet and quartet so many um, multiple signals is there and the j is equal to that is a coupling constant also we measured through these techniques is a, a spectrum at uh, the point uh, 7 ppm we can achieve oh peak that is a uh, indicated as a oh uh, peak and c is 3 it is around 1.2 to 3.3 so we can get g is 3 c h 2 so in between the uh, 1.2 to the 3.3 ppm so is the nmr uh, signals and any uh, mass spectroscopy so it is to determine the uh, mass to charge ratio and uh, determine the so many molecules compositions molecules and chemical structure through this mass spectroscopy mass of the molecule will be calculated through these techniques so this is instrumentation so we have three classification one ionizing source and analyzer and reductor 
So based on three instrumental main part, it used to remain the our unknown sample to calculate the our um, uh, unknown substance. So through these techniques, especially NMR and MOS, we can get approximately some molecular structures, especially proteins uh, and uh, some isomers, some geometrical isomers. So many molecules we have, and bigger macro molecules also there. So all the uh, organic and inorganic molecules to determine through this instrumentation. Thank you very much.